What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video I'm super excited to be talking to Lior Gantz, the founder of Wealth Research Group. Lior, how you doing today? Hey, all good. Thank you for having me back. Of course, and I'm very excited for the discussion today. We'll be talking about precious metals. We'll be talking about the dollar, inflation, all those hot topics right now. But first, can you give me an overview of what's going on and then dive into the technicals? Because I know you're a guru when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the last time I was on, it was right around that silver squeeze. You can go back to that interview and I said, look, the silver squeeze will be a failure. They, there will be no squeeze. Uh, you will not be able to squeeze the paper markets uh, and silver by rushing to your bullion dealer. Uh, it, it's two separate markets. You're going to get a, a premium on your physical and it will not move the spot price. The, uh, the LBMA and the COMAX are, are built in, in so many layers, you know, manipulation and, and leverage that it's, it's literally uh, impossible to do. And the price has not been the same as at the top of the silver squeeze, if you remember. But I said it doesn't matter. That's not the big picture. The big picture is what's going on with the dollar and with the long-term bull marketing commodities, um, which is fueled by um, some very strong demographic and social and political trends that are happening. And those have not changed since we last spoke. What has happened since then is you can see a really good range, a technical range, where silver is trading between 29 and a half and 22 and a half. And that size, that size of that range is $7. It already pierced and try to breach that resistance level at 29 and a half twice. Now it's very common in technical analysis uh, to see a formation that is very trustworthy. So uh, technical analysis is about 55% right on average. That's why it's a bet, right? It's 50-50. But there are some formations that have a much higher conviction level and they reach up to 85%. Those are very good bets to make if you're a trader. One of them is that if there's a range that lasts more than six months, and we are in one right now, the size of the range, so in other words, between the resistance and the support, which is seven bucks, if you can breach that for a third time, okay? So uh, like uh, like third time, uh, what, what do you call it in English? It's like, uh, third time's the charm. Third time's the charm. Yeah, it it is a very reliable technical level. Watch that because if we get to 29 and a half in no time, silver can be trading at 36 and a half. I know it sounds like, my God, that would be uh, the best thing ever. But that's what silver does. It has big support levels, big resistance levels. And when it gets there, because the silver shorts are very concentrated, it's, it's a silver, the, the, the shorts on the COMAX, are ba there's, there's basically eight big shorts. And they cover, I think, like 20% of, uh, of all the, the market. So it's a huge short position. It's not a naked short. It's not, you know, a GameStop style or anything like that. But man, if when they can't suppress when it hits when it hit that resistance, they're they're covering. And I can definitely see silver doing that. If you can look at the DXY, that's the dollar index. And and by the way, we are covering all of this like almost daily on wealthresearchup.com on our on our newsletter. The 90 point level is the key. That is the support. That is the five-year support. If the dollar breaks below 90, and this was when uh, the dollar was at 96, then that's the time to really get into uh, precious metals. A few days ago, as gold was breaking out, do you know what happened with the DXY? It broke below 90. It broke to 89 89.7. 89 now, what, what's happening right now is a huge battle. It's an epic battle, like to hold the line. If you remember in that movie Braveheart, oh. that's exactly what's going on between the bulls and the bears right now. The bulls are trying to make sure that the dollar, they, they're, they're basically buying, the, buying dollars. Now the bears are selling and it looks to, it looks like there's more bears than bulls. Right before the show, um, Janet Yellen, Secretary of Treasury, she said 
um, that the Congress is acting like this is 2010 because inflation adjusted, the budget hasn't changed. Like nominally, the budget has you know, ballooned. But she's saying if you look at it, inflation adjusted, we're still playing at 2010 level. So what she's saying is we need to spend. And she was listing all these departments that are underfunded. Man, if the United States government continues to spend, I don't care if it's nominal or in real terms, that is super bad for the dollar because with all this reopening around the world, emerging markets and their currencies are becoming much safer than in Corona times where you know, everyone was just rushing to the dollar, just rushing. The dollar officially has entered a bear market in March 2020 when, when it peaked on the DXY at around 130, which is the all-time high for it. And it's now at 90 and it's going below. Now, it, it can have an epic move down as, as the dollar uh, usually does when it, when it goes below that 90 level. And very good for silver, very good for gold. So basically, the dollar is getting crushed and silver has a very bright outlook. So you mentioned gold. Let's talk gold. I think gold, if it hits 2000 between now and, and, and the next two months, um, going into summer, which I think will be a very powerful time for it, silver is going to piggyback and it's going to be red, you know, white hot. So as a trader, very good time. And what I like about it even more, just to recap the whole thing, I like the fact that the gold and silver miners started to rally before gold and silver spot bright did. So the, the miners started rallying early March and gold and silver start to rally end of March. This is really good. It's a really good sign that this is not just uh, not just in the commodities, but the whole industry is booming. So, Lior, one thing I wanted to ask you about was that news story recently that the LBMA was overstating the amount of silver they were holding. Uh, I think they overstated by like 3,300 tons, right? So do you think that a future silver squeeze might be possible or just unlikely at this point? Well, we're, de we're definitely seeing that, uh, for example, AMC uh, it was a meme stock in, in January. And there's still, you know, tens of millions of people trying to squeeze it. And it's working, by the way. So um, if you look at that stock, it's like up three, four hundred, five hundred percent. And I think that the retail public is interested in, in, uh, in doing a silver squeeze. I just think a commodity is much, it, the structure is much different than with stocks, right? Because... For example, when, you, when you're trying to squeeze a, a stock, there's only a paper market. The, it, you can really concentrate your efforts. In a commodity, not only is there a physical market, and you know, most of your audience would go and try to buy a physical ounce of gold and not try to squeeze the LBMA, right? The, that's what most stackers do. So just think about that. You're, you're applying the pressure on, on, the, on the wrong supply chain. On the on a supply chain that's not leveraged, that's a hundred, you know, a hundred percent physical. You want physical. If if he if he says, look, I'm out, then the premiums start to go up. So it's almost like you're you're squeezing um, your other buddies that are trying to buy silver at good prices. So it, what it will require, in other words, a, a real silver squeeze on on the paper markets is institutional money getting interested. And that's why I come back to the silver miners and the gold miners, because the miners is what brings institutions in. When Wall Street sees that, hey, tech, tech is kind of flat and it's kind of down lately in Q1. And look at all these commodities that are flying. So what do you think these eight figure clients are doing, calling their hedge fund managers? They're like, are you in Bitcoin? Are you in silver? I just want to remind you that if you plot silver and the dollar on top of each other, they have a very strong inverse correlation. So this weakness in the dollar is super good for silver prices. There, there's literally very few commodities that are as um, impacted by dollar weakness as silver is. 
Yeah, I definitely want to talk about inflation. I know that's a really hot topic in the news right now. The most recent data we saw, it was around 4.2%. So do you think it will keep going up? I know the two things you need are expansion of, of the money supply and then velocity of money. And with everything starting to open up, for example, Disneyland just opened up to anyone in the world, not just California residents. You know, do you think we'll continue to see more velocity of money and do you think we'll continue to see inflation increase? So um, that's the question of all questions. That is literally the biggest thing that is happening this year in the markets. Everything that you see, stocks, bonds, tech, crypto, gold, silver, everything is priced on what the, the leading sentiment is towards inflation. So that's really important to remember. This is the theme of 2021. Literally on CEO calls, the word inflation was mentioned 800% more than usual. That's eight times more than usual. If you Google uh, on on the trends and you see the trends for inflation, it's at an all-time high since they started tracking in 2004. Everyone is obsessed with inflation. And what you saw at the first quarter of the year was the bond market was pricing in inflation. So bond yields on government debt was just shooting up from half a percent on the 10 year bond in August, 2020 at the bottom, which is inversely was the top for gold and silver government bonds started rallying by 200% and hit about 1.7 on the 10 year in February. This is a huge, huge, move for bonds. Um, Just so you understand, if you were buying bonds in August, you're losing so much money by February. Like uh, you're losing like 40, 50% on your money. It's, uh, It's insane. So it's a big move. Okay. So the bond market was projecting inflation. Then you had this big CPI number out 4.2%. And the highest monthly, month over month since 1980, etc. You look into the numbers, and the idea is: is this sustainable? Is this going to continue? Because if it is, we need to price everything differently, or is it like the Fed says, transitory? The answer is it's both. In other words, there's many components that are transitory. For example, um, airlines pr- are pricing tickets at like 20 bucks because they're trying to get people back. Theaters were pricing tickets at like one buck to get people back to theaters. And that's going to, you know, from $1 for, for a movie, it's going to go back to five, six, ten dollars $10 for a movie, right? Same with airline tickets, sporting events, etc. So you're going to see inflation in tourism, right? And you're going to say, man, this, there, there's like 40% inflation in tourism. But it's not going to be in everything. So it's going to be transitory in some regards and more permanent in other regards. Wages, for example, I don't see them going back down. There's a shortage of good labor in America. People are trying to hire people that have the right skills and they can't, partly because the government is paying people to stay home and partly because the economy is booming. This is not the 2010s, we're not there. This is not low growth, low inflation. This is higher growth, higher inflation. You've entered a, a decade where you're going to see higher inflation throughout. Now, people are saying, you know, the CPI is like bogus and they they cut out energy and fuel. Doesn't matter. For the markets, they care about CPI. For us, you know, if we go and shop, we can, you know, make decisions uh, as we see. Like if we if we see something is uh, expensive, we'll do something else, right? But the markets, what you and I are talking about here, silver prices, stocks, bonds, etc., they care about CPI. CPI, in my opinion, is going to about 2.3 to 2.5% on average this decade. And I don't think the Fed is not, not going to be raising rates uh, that fast. So I think we're entered into a decade of negative real rates throughout the decade. And that is really good for precious metals, really good for silver and gold. So let's say the stars align for precious metals. Let's say silver goes up over 29.50, shoots up to 36.50, and then we continue to see inflation all throughout the decade. This could bring silver and gold much, much higher, right? I think silver is going to to an all-time high, nominally. It's it's going over 50. Um, 
one thing I've always said about silver um, is that in, in, in industry, in the 5,000 plus industrial uses that it has, it, it's a small fraction. Uh, you know, a, a shirt is made out of cotton, but there, there's many, uh, there's not many items that are made out of silver. Like, here you go, you know, a platter of silver, you know what I mean? Right. It, it, it's in micro components and computers and in, in you know, and in solar panels and et cetera. So if the price goes to 50, it's not like Apple is going to go, oh my God, we have to own the mines. We, it's, a cat- it's a catastrophe. It's not going to change the price of an, of an iPhone, right? It's not, it's not a big component. So for silver to go to 50, it's not, it's not going to shake anybody's world and not even to 60. And so a lot of people are saying, oh, we cannot live in a world of, of, of silver $60. It's not the same as a world where oil's 200 and like everyone's tanks are like double the price and it's unsustainable. Silver is different. And so that's the one thing I, I, I want to stress with silver is it, it, it literally can go to 50 or 60 bucks and you won't see headlines everywhere that, uh, you know, it's out of hand or something like that. Um, so that's one thing about uh, silver. Regarding gold, I think gold has performed so well for 20 years now, um, you know, since the year 2000. And I just think it's going to continue to to be a um, just a good place to be, just a good place to put your money. I put two years worth of my living expenses in gold. The way I did it was I calculated how much I spend in one month, like the family unit, and I multiplied that by 24 months. I took that fiat currency, converted to to, to gold. So. If there's a real problem, a real inflationary depression, you know, or a recession, a slowdown, something that's really bad, I have two years worth of living expenses in gold. And that makes me feel very comfortable regarding everything else. Yeah. You know, Lior, whenever I have you on, I just want to let you talk because you're such a wealth of knowledge. Um, actually, people definitely need to go check out wealthresearchgroup.com. You've got a lot of good information there. But can you talk about mining stocks? I mean, are we on the verge of an epic breakout? Are they the best bargain in the markets right now? So um, I'll give you an example. There, there, are, there are very good companies out there, uh, very good mining companies out there, gold, silver, um, and, and, and beyond. And it, they're very risky. So they're not buy and hold. It's not like buying shares of American Express or, uh, or Amazon, right? It's not, it's not a retirement stock. It's not what you call a, a, a dividend retirement stock. These are trading vehicles. You trade them when they're depressed. You sell them when they're, um, you know, after a big rally and you exit. These are cyclical businesses. That's the first thing to preface. These are not buy and holds. If you look at, a, at, at, at the chart of Newmont or Barrick or Gold Corp for, you know, for 30 or 40 years, they're, they're, they're like this, just up and down in, in, a, in a range. And you need to just uh, find the right places. Now, specifically, if you look at specific opportunities, man, they're, they're out there. I can tell you about a company that we partnered with um, in August of 2020. And it IPO'd at, at a buck forty Canadian. It's today twelve dollars Canadian. Um, it's not even been a year, and you know they're up on big drill results, etc. And um, you know we we we've covered in our newsletter companies that are now at all time highs, fifty two week highs, etc. You if if you you know subscribe to the newsletter, you'll see our alerts when when we do them. And it's not just mining stocks. I mean, if you if you go to our website on the top menu at wealthresearchgroup.com, you'll see a tab that's called watch list. That's basically my whole portfolio that you can you can literally download and see exactly what I own. And we're gonna be adding another tab in a couple of days where it's showing the portfolio like twenty four seven all the time. You can have access to it, but. The, Absolutely. Mining stocks right now, if if silver breaks out, that's the real catalyst. If you plot mining stocks in silver, they're much more correlated than gold and, and uh, mining stocks. Gold can go up and mining stocks do nothing. Silver goes up, it attracts a whole slew of institutional speculators into the sector. They're going to buy the mining shares and that's that's really good. That That is, you know, if you've never seen one of these, it's epic. I mean, companies can go up by 100% in one month. It, it's it's a fireworks show. So silver is the key. If you see silver breaking out and you want to trade on the paper uh, side of it, 
uh, when silver goes from like, you know, 29 to 36, which is what, uh, 25% move, 30% move, these miners are going to do 100, 150, 200, you know, not all of them, but the right ones, uh, you know, you're going to double your money in no time. And um, if you catch the right ones and are able to exit and not, you know, not stay with it, stay with it. These are not, you know, these are sell on strength vehicles. So, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm very excited right now, actually, to be, to be honest with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lior, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And for everyone out there watching, don't forget to smash that thumbs up. Leave any comments you have down below in the comment section. And we'll see you on the next one. Silver Dragons out.